Okay, good morning, folks, and welcome to Member Stock Chart Request. This is where we review the symbols that our members submit for me to review. But before we get to those symbols, let's first take a look at how we're looking this morning. And we are looking very strong. We have the futures market that is up very strong here in the States. E-mini futures up uh, 27.50 at this point in time, about 1%. And we are at resistance. The Dow futures are up 1.12%. They're off the highs of the session, but a very strong showing so far this morning. The U.S. dollar is under a tremendous amount of pressure. We're well off the lows of the session. This is a uh, four-hour chart. Let's drill down to a 15-minute. Now, we had broken out on this 15-minute chart, then reversed. We are now breaking out again. If we fail to hold this lower band of support and we break down below 90.15, we're probably going to head right down to challenge the 90 level on the dollar. If that fails, I think that we will have seen the end of this dollar rally. With the outcome being that we will see commodities begin to rally. Let's take a look at gold this morning. Gold was up much higher. We were up $15 per share overnight. Now this morning we've pulled back. We're up about a half percentage point, $6.90, while okay we can't ignore the fact that we have a lower high and now we're being pressured to take out the prior lows of this morning now if we rally up and through this upper band here you can see that 1330 will be the next resistance level which we saw last night now if we break through let's pull back to a four hour chart if we break through that level which i personally think we're going to we're going to head up to the 1340 level on gold. It's widely expected that there's going to be an infrastructure bill submitted to Congress from the White House. That's $1.5 trillion in additional deficit spending. And it's at this point where you really have to wonder how they plan on financing this debt with yields rising. So I'm going to have to assume that Fed Chair Powell is going to have a lot of pressure on him to help finance this debt so members we spoke about our strategy in great detail on the week ahead commentary if you haven't checked it out yet it's posted in the members area we have war gamed this out in anticipation of a rally this week it was no surprise i'm going to throw some notes in the forum to give you my amended opinion on this morning's price action what shares we're looking to put on as longs and what we may be looking to short so check those comments out in the forum now let's get to member stock chart request okay first chart up is dk delic us holdings weekly chart all right so we put in a 52 week high at 39.43 we have since pulled back now we are looking to find a support level using the weekly chart the 2910 level looks very attractive we did see some bottoming action on Friday, but we also saw some topping action. So we have a bit of indecision here. So it won't surprise me for us to drift down to retest the support level. Now, volume has been very high, rising sequentially. So you have institutional distribution. We're breaking down an ultimate oscillator. Uh, RSI and Stokes have rolled over, but we're not trading down below 50 yet. So the 2910 level on a weekly basis looks good. Daily basis, I see the same deal here. Uh, good support at 29.10 we did rally off the lows of the day on friday we have no breakout yet above the upper band of resistance so at current the very short term trend is to the downside the stokes are becoming interesting we have a slight double bottom setup they need to hook up rsi no bueno we continue to put in lower highs and lower lows volume on friday was good so i would watch that 29.10 level as an attractive entry point KB Home weekly chart, we put in a 52-week high at 38.77. We bottomed out last week at support with a low of 28.56. Volume has been rising sequentially to the downside. With rising yields, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on these shares. Daily chart, uh, we are very close to a breakout on Stokes. Not so much on RSI, it's pretty sloppy. We're putting in lower highs and lower lows. Now, price action is very interesting. While I still think we could pull back and retest the 2772 level, which is good support 
and ideally a really good entry point because you could put a stop loss right below. The shares are firming up. Watch for a breakout above this upper band of resistance and a potential buy on a close above that level. Now, Ultimate Oscillator has broken out. We have pulled back. We put in a higher low. Now we're looking to put in a higher high. Volume on Friday was outstanding, really good. MACD, very mature. So I see no reason to go running in to open up a position here because we do like the 2772 level as a support level. If we get a breakout, you could scratch the itch and look to put on a small position. I would use the three-day rule, meaning uh, the shares need to trade above the upper band of resistance for three consecutive days before I even considered adding more to my initial position. Now, ideally, you get a rally up and through 3144, and that'll take you up above prior resistance, and you could add there. So I would show some patience here. I see no rush to get involved. The next chart up, GREK. This is the ETF for Greece. Weekly chart, that macro view. Uh, we had a double bottom setup, higher low in 2016. Ever since then, we've had a nice move off the lows. So far this year, we've rallied through resistance. We're now pulling back to retest that support level. I think it'll probably hold. Volume, though, is very high. So I don't see a rush here to go buying the shares on a weekly basis. And we do have a lower high on RSI, daily chart. Now, given the proximity to where we closed on Friday, I see zero reason to go buying these shares until we get back above $10.60 and we close there. Forget about the spike up this morning. If we do get a spike, what matters is where we close. Now, I will caution, you have both lines on Stokes trading down below 50. We know what happens when we get this setup here. Rallies tend to fade. So I like the $10 per share level as support and a risk-reward entry point that will allow me to sleep at night. Volume on Friday was very strong. So watch to see how these shares close. If you get strength and a close above 1060, okay, then you can look to open up a position. But ideally, that $10 per share level is more attractive. SFUN, FANG Holdings, uh, I'm very skeptical on these shares. The markets are sending us a signal with regards to these shares. How so? Uh, just simply using the indicators, we have lower highs on RSI, and we have broken down below the lower band of support. Stokes, lower highs, and we're going to retest the lower band of support. No breakdown yet. Volume has been above average, so a bit of institutional distribution. Now on price, we haven't broken down below the lower band of support. We did retest it. If we close down below this lower band of support, I would look to avoid the shares, and they could quite possibly be a short. Daily chart. This is not a pretty chart. We have RSI trading down below 50, as are the Stokes, and we broke down below this lower band of support, we're holding $4.44. That support level needs to be defended. If we break down below it, we're coming down to $4.14. Volume to the downside has been light, but rising sequentially. So a bit of a cautionary flag there. Too many red flags here for me to go buying these shares. I would avoid right now until the weekly chart begins to firm up some. Because right now we're putting in lower highs and lower lows. And that doesn't interest me as a long. And I wouldn't short these shares either. Not right now anyway. I would wait for a failed rally on a weekly basis. Meaning, going back to that weekly chart. We may get a rally on the shares. Watch your RSI. It'll attempt to recapture prior support. And if that fails and we begin to roll over, you could short that strength. And for all intents and purposes, what it, what that means is that it means the exact opposite of what it means when a stock breaks out. When a stock breaks out, it'll pull back, retest the breakout point. That'll validate the health of the breakout. The same deal holds here in that if we break down and we rally back to try to recapture a prior support level and it fails and it acts as resistance now, well, then that validates what was Support is now resistance, and the path of least resistance is now to the downside. So I would avoid these shares right now. Starbolt Carriers, weekly chart. 
I'm not loving the RSI here. We're seeing lower highs. And we broke down two weeks ago below the lower band of support. We're seeing lower highs on Stokes as well. Now, I guess what you could do if you're dead set on trading these shares is to open up a position right at this 50 period moving average and use a stop right below that support level. And at current, it's at $10.31. Where do we close out? $10.81. We have a breakdown on ultimate oscillator. Daily chart. So here's our triangle formation that's forming. We flashed a bullish key reversal on Friday. We did not clear resistance at $10.94. I don't see any reason to go chasing these shares. Now that all changes if we break out above this upper band of resistance, which is at current, let's call it $11.30. Volume on Friday was good. No double bottom setup yet on our Stokes. And the reason why I look at prior stochastic movements is to see whether or not there's precedence for a double bottom setup. And really, you don't get that that much. It generally just does a U-shape or a V-shape and heads up, which is fairly rare. So if you're dead set, you're going to buy these shares. You just stop right below Friday's lows or buy on a rally and a close above $11.30. Diamond Offshore, a lot of damage done here technically. Now, given the fact that oil is spiking up in the pre-market, we'll make the assumption that oil is going to close strong. If we gap up this morning to uh, trade above this upper band of resistance, you would look to open up a long position if we close there. Now, ideally, we retest the lows of last week, and it holds. And if we do hold, you want to put a stop right below last week's lows so that if we take those lows out, you're out because in all probability... If we take out last week's lows, we're coming all the way down here to 13.10, which marks the pivot point. What's a pivot point? That is the center of your W formation, which was formed in spring and summer of 2017. Volume last week was very high. Daily chart. Now, on a daily basis, the shares are becoming interesting in that you have a double bottom setup. And as I just mentioned on Star Bulk, SBLK, uh, historically, you get double bottom setups on Diamond Offshore, unlike Star Bulk, because you could see back here, double bottom setup. Back here, double bottom setup. That same deal is forming here. Now, I would buy the shares were we to close above $15 per share and use a stop right below that support level. Now, ideally, we get a pullback to here, $14 per share, which marks support, and we could put a stop loss right below that level. But we may not get that given the price of oil spiking up this morning. Members, head over to the forum. I'm going to put some notes in regarding our strategy for this morning and what our reaction will be to this spike up in the futures market, how it will impact our positions, 